Hello guys, welcome to our YouTube channel High Speed Boat Design. Today we are going to discuss about how to reduce the reflection. I have already created one video related to reflections, the type of reflections at the transmitter as well as receiver's end. I will add the link of the video in the tab here. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. As I can see most of you watches the video but doesn't subscribe to the channel. So it's my humble request that you subscribe to my YouTube channel. So there are multiple ways to reduce the reflection in the transmission line. Whenever you are having a transmitter as well as a receiver, we call it as PX and RX and both of them are connected using trays. So in the trays at the transmitter as well as at the receiver end, there are reflections as well as you can see reflections on the trays itself. So in order to reduce these reflections, there are multiple methods that can be followed. One of them is to verify that the manufactured trace impedance is the expected value and that it matches the termination. So in my earlier video, I have already explained you about the series termination, the parallel termination, the Thevenin's termination and diode termination. I'll pin it here for your reference. There are different different type of terminations that we are going to use. So the termination voltage, let us take it as RT, should match, should be in proportion to the manufactured trace impedance. So whenever you get your trace impedance values from your manufacturer and the layer stack up, in that you need to make you need to make sure that the termination resistance that you are you have used the values should correlate with each other. If the values are not correlating with each other, in that case, you will definitely see overshoots and undershoots while your signal is traveling. So these overshoots and undershoots can be seen as reflection. So this is the first point that need to be kept in mind. So in order to reduce the reflection in a transmission line, the next method is to ensure that the series termination resistor which you have placed should be placed close to the driving pin. Let me explain this with an example of a layer. So this is my stack up. I'm having multiple layers stack up with L1, L2, L3, L4 and L5. This is my micro strip line. Micro strip and this one these are the strip line traces. Strip line traces. So my driver is here and my resistor, the series termination resistor is on the top layer. We have to make sure the distance between the driver and my series termination resistor should be as least as possible and they should be connected in the same layer. So this is the perfect way of connecting your series termination resistor. Let me give you one example where the series termination resistor is incorrectly or is not properly connected. For example, you are having your driver here, your driver IC is there or you can call it as transmitter and you have a long trace and you have kept your series termination resistor here and then it is going to the next layers using VR and it is going to the receiver. So in this case, this trace which is the extra trace will also create some kind of reflections in the signal. So it is always advised and it is must to keep your series termination resistor placed close to your driving pin. So the next way in order to reduce the reflection, we need to ensure that the parallel terminations are properly connected to the load. So if you face any difficulty in understanding the word termination here, I have already created a video based on termination which you can find here in the cards. You can first you can watch that video. It explains about the different kind of terminations which are being used and after that you can resume with this video so that you can understand everything properly. So let me come back to this. Ensure that the parallel terminations are properly connected to them. So as we know series terminations are always connected to the transmitter end and parallel, parallel terminations as well as Thevenin's terminations and diode terminations. These three kind of terminations are always connected to the receiver. We need to make sure the parallel termination which is being connected to the load or we can call it as RX or receiver should be properly placed. So parallel termination is always parallel. For example, I'll show you this is my transmitter and this is my receiver RX, RX and TX 
and my parallel termination will be connected somewhat here. So this parallel termination should be connected properly in order to get a better and a, the best result and uh, in order to reduce the reflection. So as you can see this is the wave and reflection usually can be seen like this. So this will, it will be something like this. Just look at this. So this peak you are seeing this is overshoot and this is also considered into a reflection. It is a type of reflection that you can see. So the next method that we are going to use to reduce the reflection is by reducing the IUCL drive strength to decrease the launch rise time. Let me explain this part. So you are having two major major parts. One is you have a series termination register which is properly placed and you have already checked your parallel termination register which is also properly placed. Now still you are seeing some kind of a reflection. So in that case all you can do is you can play around with your drive strength. So usually every transmitter comes up with multiple drive strengths. You might have seen 8 milliamps, 4 milliamps, 2 milliamps, 16 milliamps. So this is known as the drive strength of the IUCN. So if the more the drive strength, the high will be the rise time. So if you want to reduce this peak in the signal, so this is what my signal looks like. So if you want to reduce this peak, so one of the methods that can be used is by reducing the drive strength of the signal. So if you reduce the drive strength of the signal, somewhat the value of this will change like this. This looks fine. So in this case, the drive strength is changed. So the red one is 4 milliamps of drive strength and the green one is 8 milliamps of drive strength. So you will notice once the drive strength of the signal got reduced, in that case, the reflection which is an overshoot is also reduced and the ringing will also be reduced. So this is one of the ways, but it is uh, the last option that should, should uh, that you should be using because the software team which is working along with you on the ASIC part, they need to change the drive strength using the software. You don't have to do it manually. So the next way to reduce the reflection in the transmission line is we need to ensure that the signal reference planes are connected to the IO drivers. Let me explain you how it is done. So you are having one TX, one transmitter here, you are having one RX receiver here. So in the transmitter as well as in the receiver you will find these following planes. One is VDD, okay, then you will find ground, then you will find signal pins and clock pins. We will notice this ground pin is there in both the transmitter as well as receiver. Okay, VCC or VCC, we will call it as VCC instead of VDD. Okay, VCC ground, signal layer, signal, sorry, signal pins and clock pin. So these ground pins of both the transmitter and receiver should be connected to a, to a same reference plane. You can call it as AGND or analog ground or whatever the signal plane is. So this is what both of them should be related. So it shouldn't be like this TX for the ground pin of TX is connected to AGND and this one is connected to for the RX it is connected to VSS or VCC or we can call it as plus 5 volt or 1.5 volt any any voltage. So both of them should be connected to the same ground or the same reference plane. If it is done like this, then if you see the curve here, so there will be very less overshoot as well as undershoots that can be seen. See, so the reflection will definitely get reduced. So this is one of the methods. So today, whatever I'm explaining, all these methods, these are the checks that every SI engineer should do whenever they are seeing a reflection in their signal. So the next method in order to reduce the reflection in the traces is we need to ensure that the adequate decoupling is placed between the power and ground planes. So how does decoupling is helping in reducing the reflection? It is one of the most important parts because as I mentioned in the earlier, early, earlier option that they both are connected to the same ground pin. Both the ground pins are of TX as well as RX is connected to the same ground reference. In the last example, I have already explained. So this ground reference should not be having any SSN. SSN is 
so this ssn means simultaneous switching noise switching noise so whenever there is a switching noise between the power plane as well as the ground plane that can act as a ground bounce and it can be shown in the traces also so we need to take care of the decoupling how we are going to do is we are going to add decoupling capacitors decoupling capacitors need to be added that is a part of the power integrity analysis i have already explained that in the power integrity video about how to place the decoupling capacitors and what are the importance of decoupling capacitors so in order to reduce the ssn that is simultaneous switching noise we use decoupling capacitors so the decoupling also plays a major role while checking the reflection so when all your signal part is taken care like series termination resistor parallel termination resistor and you have checked that the manufacturer that the trace impedance is matching and everything is fine now still if you are seeing this issue then there must be some issue with the power plane as well as the reference plane that you have used so you need to look into that reference plane now so the next way to reduce the reflection is if properly matching the load impedance to the transmission line impedance is not possible so we are we are seeing a scenario where for example if my load impedance is 50 ohm and it is not matching with my trace impedance which is 55 ohms now in that case we always go for the worst case scenario where we have to put this value as close as 55 like we need to take this 50 value as close as 55 so how we are going to do is so for example if you are if in your design you are having a lumped capacitor which is already at the load which is already at the load right so in that case so in order to reduce the reflection all you need to do is eliminate multiple reflections by ensuring that the driver impedance is closely matched to the line impedance as i explained now so 50 just try to make it as 52 which is close to 55 or as close as possible so that both the impedances matches up to a level where the margin of reflection can be seen like for example if you are having this overshoot here and there is one margin for the overshoot so if it is within the margin then it is fine and we are good to use it so these were the methods that i have explained thank you for watching this video please like the video please comment down if you have any question related to the video please share this video with all your friends and family and let them know if they are having any issues they can always pin down the comments and i would be happy to help you guys on the in the comments please subscribe to my channel as i can see most of you like the video and watch the video but doesn't subscribe to my channel please subscribe to my channel and have a good day thank you